I work in the AI ML field. I'm a data scientist as well. How much do you make? Right now I'm at 150. I've been doing it for about five years. I actually started in traffic and highway engineering, like civil engineering. Ended up going to a boot camp because I realized I was doing a lot of work on autonomous vehicles and I didn't know the software side. So I ended up working by day as a traffic engineer and studying AI ML at night. I ended up uploading a lot of my work on LinkedIn and it went viral because this was like five years ago and nobody knew about AI. Right, yeah. yeah. A job recruiter reached out to me and said, come to BWI, right? Yeah, 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 yeah to a, for a job fair. I got hired on the spot from the Navy. I got a clearance and stuff like that and I've been working my way up ever since then. Any advice that you would share with others who are interested in doing what you do? Like what worked for you? Don't have imposter syndrome. You can do it. There's so many resources online that you can get. And just put yourself out there, even at events like this. Stay busy. Diamonds are made under pressure. Did you know that data scientists are the most sought after AI job on the market right now? And it's not just tech companies hiring them. Companies hiring data scientists who specialize in AI span multiple different industries, including finance, media, and the government. If you want to break into data science, visit the link in our bio to explore a list of 17 different data science certifications that Indeed recommends to help you break in. I'm a UX designer. UX designer. How long have you been doing that? I was doing it for five years. Cool. And how did you get into it? I got into it to a free program in um, Brooklyn. Brooklyn for um, from uh, community college. How much do you make in your role? Uh, 185. I feel like it should be more, but uh, I'm looking to get more now. When you work for a nonprofit, they ask you to do a lot more things than other than just being a UX designer. Yeah. And so like now they kind of as a senior role, you need to do a lot more. So like you need to have like a project manager, a, a product manager, and uh, coding. Even. You should definitely get more. Yeah. So I'm looking to get between like. 200, 250. Any advice for others who want to do this as well? Um, don't pay for it. Um, do a free program. Um, I did a lot of free tutor, uh, tutoring on uh, YouTube. Yeah. And I, did, I went to the Adobe conference and I got to meet the people that uh, actually taught me for free and they gave me a lot of resources to help me. Anything else that you would share? The best way for people to get to UX, try to talk to other nonprofits okay. that they need us. Yeah. So right now I'm actually an elementary school art teacher. How long have you been doing that? For about 10 years. How did you get into it? Um, well, I went to school for art. I was okay. actually going to school for art and graphic design and advertising yeah. and then, you know, life just kind of happened. So need a job and teaching is always hiring. How much do you make in your role? So right now I'm making about $40,000. I'm based out in North Carolina. Okay. But I'm currently trying to transition into tech, so that's why I'm here. What are some of your goals? What do you want to achieve in the future? Like what kind of tech roles are you looking for? Well, since I've been here, I've actually learned about different roles that I'm thinking about pursuing. But right now I think I'm leaning towards program manager. Program Being manager. that I'm a teacher, I can really transfer those skills over to program managing. I love that you're thinking about it in terms of transferable skills. And I'm already thinking like UX design, if you've got design yeah, skills, you can do that. About that. I'm like, I I haven't even thought about that, so yeah. I've, You've got options. I've got a lot of options. Awesome. What words of advice would you share with others who are interested in doing what you do, or what have you learned over the years that you would share? Take the leap of faith. Don't be scared. Do your research. Just get out there and, you know, go for your goals. I'm an account manager and I'm an entrepreneur. My business name is Brown Mill Company. I'm the head of operations here at Brown Mill Company. Yeah. Uh, we've been in business for over 15 years, and we have our storefront uh, in downtown Newark. How much do you make in both your roles? So account management, I make 140k a year. Entrepreneurship, it varies. Um, I would say it ranges. I don't really take a salary, honestly. Yeah. So it can range from maybe like 20k to around 40k in a good year. How much do you make in your role? Uh, I make 50k a year. How did you break into both? So I started my brand in high school. Yeah. So it's just been something I always did. And I went to college for finance. I worked on Wall Street for a couple years. Cool. Eventually moved on to Twitter. Yeah. Um, when I did the move to Twitter, I got into just advertising. And now I'm in my next company doing advertising. Brother and his partners founded the business and brought me along to operate it. What advice would you share with others who are interested in doing what you do? Anything you've learned along the way that you would share? Have a plan. And if you are creative and you work in a corporate job, don't be too hard on yourself because you can always pull different gems from your corporate job and bring it to what you do on the side. Yeah. And also have a good team. You can't do everything by yourself. Yeah. So me having a good team allows me to do both. And eventually I do want to be a full-time entrepreneur. Honestly, as an entrepreneur, the biggest key to success is consistency. You know, even if you're failing, you know, even if you're winning, as long as you just stay with it, you learn from your lessons, you'll get to where you want to be. What is your favorite piece on this table right here that you can My show us? favorite piece? Can we go on a little walk? Yeah, let's go on a walk. <laughs> It's definitely got to be our handmade overstitch reversible socks. Ooh. They're so cool. 
I love that. We debuted this design when we opened our storefront, and they've been a hit ever since. It has to be our staple. Think bigger, hoodie. Um, this is just a saying that gets everybody going. Like, look at your current situation and think bigger. I work for one of the largest financial institutions. I'm a program manager where I host hackathons globally. I'm not in tech, but I work very closely with technologists, with nonprofits, and university students, where we fly university students into one of our campuses, put them on randomized teams led by technologists, and they work to solve a challenge to help a local nonprofit. The goal is after they participate in the hackathon, they could potentially get an internship offer for the following summer. I love that. How long have you been doing this? For one year now. For one year. And how much do you make in your role? 85 a year. What kind of skills or experience did you need for your role? It's a very client-facing role, so you need to be able to network, yes, and connect with people, yeah. um, being organized and on time. Yeah. And honestly, you kind of need to rely on other people when you host events. I have an amazing team that I work with, but just making sure I'm on top of people saying, hey, don't forget, I need this. I need this. Yeah. yeah. Anything you would share with others? No, but you know what I will say? I really enjoy your channel and everything that you do. You really put in perspective, like, hey, like, am I underpaid and undervalued? Yeah. So the fact that you're even here at this event and allowing people to really share their salary and, like, salary transparency. Because Glassdoor will tell you certain things, but, like, you have people here in face saying, like, this is what I make. These are the options. Exactly. So maybe I could pull up a TikTok video and say, well, according to this person that Hannah spoke with, this according is what the salary <laughs> transparency. street. This is what the salary is supposed to be. So yeah. thank you for the work you do. I'm a business analyst. Business analyst. What about you, Austin? Independent contractor. Very cool. And how much do y'all make in your roles? 170. Ooh, I love that. 155. I love this conversation already. <laughs> what are your backgrounds? How did you get into your roles? Uh, so I'm from the military, the Army, uh, more so on the defense side of intelligence. Uh, my transferable skills went over to being a BA, yeah. uh, and now I'm supporting that um, federal clients, agencies with that skill set. What about you? So I specialize in SAP implementations, so supply chain and finance. So okay. anything from Wells Fargo up to Amazon. Love that. And how long have y'all been doing this? Uh, for me, about a year and a half. A year and a half. About eight years now. Any advice that you would share with others who are interested in your roles? What worked for you? Be open. Uh, don't uh, turn your nose up at any opportunity because it can turn into a, a good thing for you. Yeah, that's great advice. What about you? Um, be open to change. Don't say no to a, a responsibility or a role that you may not want to do. Yeah. It's usually the ticket that nobody else wants to do. So most previously, I was a program manager for an ed tech company called GoGuardian. Right now, I'm in the transitionary period, looking for my next role, and staying within big tech. Previous to this, I was in higher education, then I got into, I was really interested in private equity and venture capital, yeah. so I got into executive recruiting, and through that, I found my way into tech. I was making around uh, 160, well, in total, probably 180 with uh, stock options as well. What kind of skills or experience did you need for that role? I think oftentimes when people think about tech, they think you need to be technical. Yeah. I am not as technical as I would love to be, but I'm getting there. But for that role, you really needed organizational development, uh, program management, understanding how programs work, and being able to develop roadmaps. Yeah. And these are very transferable skills from so many different areas. For those, you can do certifications, you can take courses, and just learning as you go. We are at a time where we've seen so many people, especially within the tech space, lose their roles. It's a hard time, right? But I just want to really encourage everyone that keep going. That next opportunity is just around the corner. There's an old saying that says that if you tell yourself no, nobody else can tell you yes. So keep on working so you can get that next opportunity. I'm the CEO of RightSea.com, a VC-backed tech startup. I am the co-founder and CMO of RightSea. We're helping people get jobs in a nutshell. I'm the co-founder and director of sales at a tech startup that's venture-backed. What is RightSea? Tell me more about so it. RightSea is a suite of AI career mobility tools really helping to help job seekers all across the world supercharge their career with the things that actually matter to ease the anxiety of the job search process because the job search is broken. How much do you make in your role? So I make about 130000 a year as a CEO. I make 130000 a year. Nice. And I got equity in a company so when we when we exit hopefully I walk away with like 15 mil 20 mil I make probably about a hundred K plus commissions and 
The thing I love about sales is commissions is uncapped, so the sky is the limit. How did you get into this? I started my career as a tech consultant at PwC, so I've been a full-time entrepreneur for four years, and then Right to came about because I said, you know what? Who's building technology for job seekers? And if anybody, it should be us. I graduated from Georgia State University with two degrees, one in marketing, one in finance. My first job out of college, work, I worked at Adobe yeah. as a financial analyst. It was like 85,000 coming out of college with benefits and everything. My total compensation was like 115K nice. with like RSUs. I actually just cashed out my equity from Adobe, so that was fire. I have a master's degree in sustainability. So I was an environmental scientist, and then I was a sustainability analyst, and then I started sales. So I'm a non-traditional sales exec. Any advice for others that might be interested in tech, being an entrepreneur, anything you would share there? Just get started. I feel like a lot of times we think about things and we overthink it, yeah. but really everybody has it with them. Everybody can be a business owner. You don't have to necessarily be an entrepreneur, but you can be a business owner. First and foremost, stay consistent. Believe in yourself. Be creative. Take risks. I'm a big risk taker. It's nothing I can't do. At a high level, study the greats. Most people try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I'm just taking bits and pieces of things that people already did. What you want to do is you want to find a team because you can go fast by yourself, but you go farther with a team. Salary transparency is it. I hope you exit one day and whatever your plans are for the business, you will achieve them for sure. Stay tuned for our collaboration with Right C yes. that will be coming soon. It's gonna be big. You heard it here first. So for work, I am currently a release train engineer. I have been in this space uh, now, the agile and scrum space now for about seven, eight years. I transitioned out of sales okay. first. How much do you make in your role? Okay, so currently right now, I make $145,000. Yes. I love to see it. Yes, yes. <laughs> do you feel well compensated? I could definitely be making a little bit more, but I think, you know, for, for the economy that we're in, not too bad. We can always get a little bit more, absolutely, right? Absolutely. What kind of skills or experience did you need to break into this? You have to have really good uh, people management skills. I would definitely say interpersonal skill sets, yeah. uh, good relationship building, negotiation, the list goes on and on. If you are in college and you're watching this, I highly recommend you getting some sales. Soft skills are transferable to different right. industry. How do people transition into this? So for starters, Shema's plug, check out agileandbrunch.com. I love um, that name, yes, that's so good. Thank you, thank you. So if you're looking for a way to transition, we are going to be here in the DMV in June for Agile and Brunch 2024. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, conversations. It's very light, it's not a conference. We're not doing all the workshops and breakouts. We're there to build connections. Um, we may have some recruiters in the building too as well. Um, and for me, after doing this seven, eight years, I would say that the most important opportunity is to focus on building the relationships. I'm an information system security officer. What does that mean in a sentence for people who don't know what that means? So pretty much uh, implementing policy, compliance, uh, systems, administrators type work, security controls, that things for all the different systems within the Department of Homeland Security. Gotcha, okay. How much do you make in your role? Uh, right now I'm at 170K. How long have you been doing this? Did eight years in the Navy. 2021 I actually got into GovTech. It's been about two years. How did you break in? Did you know somebody? Did you have a skill? How did that go for you? So I was able to leverage my security clearance that yeah. I got when I was in the military. Oh, we love a security clearance. <laughs> exactly, definitely. Uh, got some uh, security certifications, uh, Security Plus, it's yeah. a big one in the DMV area, as well as self-teaching. So a lot of yeah. uh, just self-teaching was able to you know build my resume, build my contacts and connections and they were yeah. my into, into the door. What advice would you share with others who are interested in doing what you do? Anything you would share? Um, so I specifically target those who are in the military looking to transition yeah. who don't have absolutely no clue what they want to do when they get out. Uh, I would say definitely get into GovTech, research it. There's so many lanes and avenues within technology space yeah. that you can find your niche of things. I know you can find something that you want to do. Definitely. And um, security clearance, definitely leverage your clearance and get those uh, certifications. I'm an enterprise software sales. Very cool. Can you describe what that is in a sentence? Uh, basically, I reach out to executives at Fortune 500 to solve their business problems using technology, and I got to sell it yeah. and close deals and make commission. Love that. How much do you make in your role? Uh, base salary 150, and then OTE commission anywhere between 300,000 to 500,000, depending on how good the year is. How'd you get into this? Like, what skills and experience did you need? Uh, so I did sales internships in uh, college, yeah. and then I met IBM at a career expo, uh, got the job, and I've been doing tech sales since 2006. Amazing. Any advice that you would share with others who want to do what you do or just career advice in general that you would share? Um, I would say uh, just jump into it. You don't need sales experience to get into tech sales. You start at the bottom as an SDR and then you can work your way up. Yeah. Um, so find a reference, somebody at the company that will refer you in. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out what I do, you can connect with me and uh, yeah. I definitely have some resources as well. Where can people find you? Uh, on Instagram, Dr. J, so D-O-C-T-A-J. I appreciate um, that. 
<laughs> yeah, and uh, also I have a podcast called Big Tech Energy. I'm the founder and executive director of Baddies in Tech. Amazing. What did you do before becoming a full-time entrepreneur? Yes, I was a DEI tech recruiter. Very cool. How much did you make as a recruiter and now? So as a recruiter, I made $108,000 base, nice. not including like bonuses and things like that. As a founder, I pay myself a lot less. I pay myself about 50K a year, yeah. but that's obviously increasing. I just went full time. So, you Yay. know, sometimes as a founder, you got to pay everyone else before you pay yourself. And so, you know, we're, yeah. I have a lot of savings. I have a lot of equity that, that I've, you know, been able to sustain myself on as I pay myself a little bit less to make my venture take off. Yeah. yeah. I just took a pay cut too. And that is the business of that being is, self-employed, exactly, right? You got to invest in others to invest in yourself. Exactly, exactly. How did you get into this in tech, recruiting, being an entrepreneur? Yeah, I, I followed my passions. I followed my heart. I've always had a passion for DEI and creating safe spaces for people who look like me. And so um, being able to, to do that and take that professionally into a company um, and just caring about other people's careers and caring yeah. that that they get the opportunity to, to make the money that yeah. they, um, they deserve yeah. through the work that they love to do. What kind of skills and experience did you need to get into this? Like any certifications or things like that? Sometimes people have like an HR background yeah. or um, you really can get into recruiting through um, just learning some of the skills that you would need. So being familiar with um, ATSs, so applicant tracking systems. So for me personally, I had a, a base of people that are talented, yeah. right? So like being a connector, being someone who knows a lot of people. Yeah. Um, if you know a lot of people and you um, are interested in helping them just kind of develop, you know how to do a good resume, yeah. um, you could you could probably be a recruiter. You yeah. could do this. You can do this. Exactly, you can do this, yeah. Any advice, any last words that you would share that has helped you, that you would share with others? You don't need to know the end goal to take the first step. Just take the first step. Um, be reflective of yourself. If you're trying to break into tech or you want to make more money and you're like, what's my next step? Just be reflective of yourself. What do you yeah. enjoy doing? What are your skills? And, and talk to other people so you can find out what they do and what, um, what opportunities are out there and yeah. just believe in yourself and you don't need to know the entire path to take the first step. Yeah. yeah. Where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me at Baddies in Tech on Instagram, um, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So I'm a recruiting consultant at a media company in the D.C. area. Nice. How long have you been doing that? I've been there for about four years. Four years. Yes. And how much do you make? So I make upwards of 120 plus. Nice. Yes. Do you feel well compensated? I do feel well compensated. It's good to be able to recruit for not only just different departments, but being able to source the talent in the D.C. area. Definitely. What are some ways that you're helping the candidates that you're sourcing make what they're worth? I think not only it's just about connection in the recruiting process, but also the prep that you give them. Knowing what those expectations are, knowing that there are no surprises or any hurdles that they'll have yeah. to expect in the interview process that wasn't mentioned before. I love that. Recruiters are one of the first steps towards people getting fairly paid, so I love to see that you're doing the right thing. Yes, any advice that you would share with others who are interested in your role or just career advice in general? I would say just broaden your horizons when it comes to what you want. Try things. They might not work out, but that's also okay. Yeah. And also just flex your connections. Connections are everything. You know, really recruiters, are. relationships are everything. So the more transparency that you have yeah. with your recruiters or anyone that you're talking to, the better experience that you'll have in the actual job. I'm an IT consultant for the Navy. I'm a GRC consultant mm -hmm. for a small cybersecurity company. Mm -hmm. How much do you make in your role? So right now I make about like 65K a year. I'll say 105. Total talk. What kind of like skills or experience do people need to do what you do? You don't really need certifications, but if I were to recommend, I would say getting your Security Plus or maybe your CISA certification. Okay. I would definitely recommend getting the CompTIA Security Plus first, and then honestly after that, just really start doing a lot of research about what industries you want to really get into, because you know, you got cloud computing, cybersecurity, IT oh, support, nice. business analysts, you name it, like project manager, the list goes on. So. Any words of advice, like anything that's helped you that would help others as well? I'm 22. You can definitely wow. be young and do it. Um, I have no college degree, probably only maybe a couple of years of experience, wow. so anyone can do it and yeah, go for it. I have my own IT consulting firm where I help individuals break into the tech industry and they also scale their careers with me. So, you know, she's a product of it too. Actually, my brother, um, he actually got me into tech. So at first I have like a background in healthcare, but like 
I was like, I don't really like this. I'm more of a technology person. So I started consulting and then I got in. We also help people break into tech at King's Tech Consulting. So that's how I got into tech. Go tech is the way to go if you guys haven't found out yet.